You're live at the Dog and Stacy Cabin. Here we go. And you're not going to believe this one, folks. Get your tea. Hopefully it's that rest and digest tea. Or the chocolate tea from the Missouri Tea Company. Because that is the place to be. Oh, we got the notifications are going wild, folks. The notifi Oh, we got sounds going everywhere. We got to stop all the sound. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> Make sure you guys hit that refresh. Oh my gosh, y'all. Hit that refresh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, she's on. Oh, I'm not going to get caught. I thought I, I turned that. mine down. I did not <laughs> All right, are we going to do well, it? Well, I have to. We're going, oh, she's moving already. No, I have to get my cool stand. Oh my gosh, y'all. Here we go. We're going to get right into it. Let's just We're just waiting for folks to show up. We'll talk about a few things here just to fill the air. And then we're going to get why we got a knock on the door about our garden. Did you see that thumbnail? Oh, my gosh, y'all. Come on now. Woo! Uh, Jim Carrey, John Carrey, Jim Carrey, it should be. But John Carrey is on record saying that we cannot get to net zero unless we... <coughs> all the farmers. I did a video just recently, if you guys missed it, about Amos Miller. And the verdict is in. The judge sided with the state. With no evidence, no cases against them, nothing going on there. And now it's probably going to go to the Supreme Court. We're going to have the Amish farmer take our food security right to the Supreme Court on behalf of all citizens in America, which is also ridiculous because the Constitution basically guarantees our right to grow and eat food. And they have absolutely no right even being involved in the food. But you exchanged all that safety and security for your food freedom didn't you because <laughs> you were scared about that food that we grow on the on the farm there's people y'all there are people that will not even eat food fresh from the garden or fresh from the farm they'll buy it at the store and then they'll Honest sell it goodness, and give it away they, they'll be yeah. like oh are you sure this is safe to eat uh <laughs> it's the truth it's the truth scouts honor how do they do it I forget now because that's another polluted American organization. I see the girls out selling the Girl Scout cookies now. I'm going to be the one to say it, Doug the Crusher. If you buy Girl Scout cookies, you're part of the problem. <laughs> and besides that, they're made not good. They're terrible. Yeah, they're not good. And you're supporting a bad cause now because all that stuff's gone woke. And when you go woke, you go broke. All right, so we're gonna get right into it, right? Let's see. We are. We're saying we're we're saying hi to everybody. We are. That's what I was saying. I'm just seeing how far we're two minutes in. We like to deliver. People don't have all night to know what's going on and why we got knocks on the door about the garden. A lot of stories about gardens lately. I don't know if you guys are paying attention. Oh, and the farmers in Poland. Did you guys see the farmers in Poland? Let me see if I can show you real quick. This is what's going on while you guys are trying to hustle and muscle and pay your bills. The farmers in Poland. I don't know if I'll find them. Hold on. Let me see if I can find them. And while he's looking, Maddie says Northeast Wisconsin has ticks already. Oh, everybody does. Yeah. 75 degrees or 9 degrees today here. Wind blowing everywhere. They're drying us up so they can hit the dew and hit the fires. Fires everywhere. A lot of cattle burned in Texas, too. Did you hear that? Yeah, I know there's. They lost right. some cattle in Texas with this big fire down there in oh, the Panhandle. Cold to say, Grocery Garden says that her own church food pantry will not take garden produce donations because they said it could be <laughs> dirty. It could be dirty. I do not make this stuff up. They won't take the garden produce because it could be dirty. Yeah, Landy says my sister reviews Lord Z eggs from my mother's chickens because they aren't from the store. There's oh, a lot of people like that. and while you weren't paying attention, I can say it because it's hot news on Friday night. Shh, COVID's now just the regular flu. Just sit yourself in the bed for a couple days and then get your butt back to work in case you missed it. <laughs> Man, we're getting about getting tired of kicked around, aren't we? Kicked yeah, around Diana. Not feeling good. And Justice Akers, she says her neighbor won't eat anything unless it comes from the store. Most the truth. There's a lot of people like that. Yeah. It is the truth. Man, people. I'm trying to find you guys the uh the Polish farmers here. Everybody the farmers, ago. the farmers, every y'all, there are protests all over the globe, except for here in America, where we're all fat and happy. Where we got the, you know, our biggest imports are mattresses and booze. So, you know, go look it up. And TVs. I could be wrong, TVs but go look too, it up. Right? That was a statistic one time when I was paying attention. 
Oh man, here we go. So I can't find the Polish farmers, but trust me, they are all over the place. But in case you did miss it and you were wondering why we were having trouble, Asylum. it's your president. You heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. Surge that border, baby. Asylum. <laughs> right out of the commander in chief's mouth, y'all. That's called treason, but nobody cares anymore. We don't have values or, you know, any kind of rule of law that hardcore. It's kind of like play soft, kick glove stuff, right? But if we got back to the real meal deal, we would be something to talk about. We would be the light on the hill. All right, what you got, Stace? I'm trying to find the Polish farmers, but I'm going to be unsuccessful. I know. I'm just looking. And That's just from the everybody. Twitter, y'all. Twitter is on fire if you ever want to go over to the Twitter stuff. But be warned. You've been warned. It's not PG-13 over there now. We're talking about some heavy hitting stuff. All right. 3,600 folks in the house. We're a little light on the thumbs up. Please help give the thumbs up because that helps people remember that we are having a live show. Yeah, Plandemic Life says yesterday the thunderstorm caused the house to shake, the foundation of the house. Nice. The thunder, the month of February, there was a lot of thunder. A lot of thunder with lightning and storms. What's that mean? And they always say that if you have thunder in February, then you're going to have, it's going to be a cold May. And, and some frost, too. Because we've been, it's getting really warm here. Like, you know, really warm. Very soon. <laughs> we broke a record. But last week, yes. it was 86 in St. Louis. They said it broke the record for the earliest time it got that warm and for the temperature for that day. Okay. Okay. Six minutes in. We're going to get right into the knock on the door. All right. So, you guys, growing food is pretty important. Like, it's a really important thing. Stacy and I grow a lot of our own food. Um, we've started off in the ground. We slowly worked our way into the raised beds. Now we have... I don't know how many braised beds do we have. Well, he we we took it like three or four of them apart, so we probably have like twenty if he fixed them this year, which I hope he. We have about twenty. Plus, we have a high tunnel, and, and there's four in beds there. inside there. And we're gonna add one more. We grow a lot of our fruit bearing trees. You know, we have apple trees, blackberries. We tried blueberries a couple times, not that successful at it. Well, it was good. They just were. I just moved them, and I haven't moved them back. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be somewhere else, a little more acidic. So what we want to do is to kind of help you guys as well, because a lot of you are struggling gardeners, or maybe you're just starting out. So we want to try to help put tools in your hand that can help you move the needle on your gardening, growing food for your family, because like we said, 2024 is going to be pretty tricky. And if you guys can grow anything that you can this year, it'll be really good. It'll be good for your confidence. It'll be good for you to learn how to grow something where food actually comes from, from the Father, just like your scripture says. He gives you the seed bearing plant, which also produces the seed so you can have more food over and over instead of working and toiling for the man outside of your home. You can be right at home with your whole family growing food, eliminating a lot of those grocery bills, and then you could, you know, be together. But anyways, that's the plan. And it regenerates year after year, providing food for you guys and sustenance for year after year. And we were like that. We lived in the city 15 years ago. We were buying everything from the store and then... We were kind of sick and we were like thinking about it. What are we going to do? We're not feeling good. It probably is the food. And everything else. And just with everything. We, you know, most of you guys know our story, but we made a 200 degree turnaround where we just decided to be totally self-sufficient, immerse ourselves. We went off grid. We had no electricity. We had no running water. Uh, we just decided to start a garden, not knowing how to do anything. And we kind of learned, <laughs> we learned, I guess, and from the heart of the school of learn by doing and, <laughs> and we were immersed into it so like because money was a thing you know because it was we're tight budget so we couldn't spend a lot at the store plus store was farther away so that enticed us too to grow more underneath our feet cut out all this traveling and all this stuff eat more from the vine i promise you guys that if, if you guys can eat closer to the vine you're gonna have more energy you're gonna feel better Just, so well, let's talk about this real quick so we do talk about this a lot. When you go to the grocery store, it travels anywhere from like 12 to even 2,000 2, miles, miles to get to you. So from the time they pick it from the vine and it gets to you, it's going to lose a lot of nutritional value. So them. if you could start growing food or 
grow maybe some food. Maybe you're like, I don't have time or I'm not good at this. I don't have a green thumb. You know, you start a few things in some pots or maybe you have one little raised bed and you do some things. And then maybe you frequent the farmer's market or you do community supported agriculture or you get in a co-op or anything like this. That food that you're going to get is going to be more local and it's going to have so much more nutrition. So a lot of people, you're eating food. You know, we talk about not eating processed food because it's just depleted of everything. So people are eating food, which are full of empty calories, which are processed foods, but you're getting food and it's giving you like, I don't know, it's, it's not even giving you nutrition. So people are That's eating, and eating, eating, eating and eating and eating it more and, and then you you're get getting overweight. overweight and it's not giving you the energy that you want. And then it's harder for your liver to filter through your body. You know, then you're feeling lethargic. You're not sleeping properly. You know, all these different things come about it. Um, and eventually you might get nutrient deficiencies. But if you eat real food that's close to the vine, it's going to be sock full of nutrients. It's going to be healthier be. for you. And then just by changing one little thing like that, not eating the processed food and growing your own food like that, it could really solve a lot of health problems. So these things, it was really true to, our, you know, and so close to our heart that we just started doing this and noticing how our health started getting better and better and better. If you're putting things in it that your body knows, that's real food that has real calories that your body can recognize. It's crazy what can happen because your body wants to get healthy. So we just started doing that. We started eating, you know, getting out in nature. And then when you're out in the garden, I mean, it is really neat to be playing in the dirt. You're grounding. We talk a lot about that. We have a lot of, we're inundated by um, EMFs or the electromagnetic um, radio like frequencies around us from the cell phone tile towers from your television from your computers all this stuff is all around our bodies so when you can get grounded like being barefoot in the dirt or walking on the dew in the grass or you know being barefoot same thing goes if you put your hands in the soil so if you're working in the soil get your hands in the soil that will ground you too because what oh, happens is we need a way to let go of that emfs that 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 radioactivity inside of our bodies and when you wear rubber soled shoes, radioactivity. Yeah, yeah. When you wear those rubber soled shoes, it's going to keep that static in you. So it's very helpful to let it go. And then gardening is great. Playing in the dirt is great. You get good microbes that your body likes. Just simply, most people are familiar with electricity that you have to have a grounding rod to disperse the electricity, right? That's the same thing with us. We're electrical beings and you need to have contact with the dirt to let that energy out. That will free up a lot of your ailments, possibly. So try that as well. So what we're going to do tonight, though, is put in your hands a tool because a lot of people that are maybe new at gardening, they don't know how to start the seeds or when do you start the seeds or how long does it take or how much how much food would I get out of this much seeds or this much food that I plant, right? So tonight we have a special guest, Clyde here. Let's get over. We're going to bring in Clyde. <laughs> we got Clyde coming in. He's a good old farmer boy from down in southern Missouri. He's a little on the conservative side, and I'm a little wild for him. Come on in, Clyde. Go closer, go closer. And Clyde is a uh, designer of a chart that you guys need to know about. We're going to talk about it tonight. We're going to answer some questions about growing food because we want to empower you guys, especially this year, uh, to start growing more food so you get better and better as the time goes on, and maybe you could teach your kids. That's the main thing as well, is teaching your kids how to be food self-sufficient right because, yeah i think a lot of times is when you talk about growing a lot of people have it's kind of scary thing if you've never done it before and so they're early on i guess what it's probably was when i we had it 15 years ago before i even knew Clyde was. yeah that's true we so, had his calendar we bu we bought his calendar it might have been three bucks or something then 15 plus years ago because we were moving out here and we didn't really know how to uh, garden and do this stuff. But I don't remember how we brushed against it, like how it came into our life, so to speak. But somehow at something we went to. or I got it. Some, yeah, I got it. Because I'm like, oh, this is this might be really we different had that. because yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I think the first time we met you was at one of the Mother Earth News Fair. Yes, that's yeah. it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had already had the thing. We were using it. That's uh, serendipitous. Is that what they call it? It's like a lot of the things that we were already doing when we first got out here to help us along and stuff. We ended up making these connections like the sun oven. We had already had a sun oven. We were using it for dehydrating, a lot of cooking. And now we ended up working with them. And you guys are loving the sun oven and what it does for you and your family. But back to the garden. 
Clyde's got a garden planner here. Tell them a little bit about your planner, Clyde. Well, I was, um, I had a family. All right there. I had a family of uh, six uh, children, and I was uh, noticing how high my grocery bill was, and decided. And I looked at the, you know, the seed packets in the store, and like a four dollar packet of tomato seeds. Uh, check to see how many dollars worth of tomatoes can you grow. And it was like $250, $300 worth of tomatoes. And I'm like, you know, that where else in society can you find a ratio like that? Yeah. And it's kind of like maybe the Lord above arranged this situation where we can cut our costs if we'll do some gardening. And, you know, I don't think it was any coincidence that Adam and Eve were put in a garden. Yeah. So, uh, so I started uh, working on uh, my own little garden plan. And uh, I was uh, studying for my industrial engineering work using a horizontal calendar. Have I ever told you this? Yes. Before? See, and this is how was, it comes into play because he's a mechanical using, guy. I was studying using a horizontal calendar to plan the delivery of product for like a John Deere harvester, 20,000 components. You can't ship it if the window crank is gone. Right. And uh, so I, I listed my vegetables. And uh, I scribed a line for the frost, and I scribed a line for a baby that was just about to be born, our, our third baby, okay? okay. And uh, I looked at it and set it up, and I noticed that it has a natural S-curve, which they teach you about in the engineering school, that uh, it curves in an S. And there's uh, the cold crops, cold weather crops are ahead of the frost, and the warm weather crops are after the frost. Yep. And it dawned on me that if the frost line would slide, my chart that I did for my family would work all over the country. And that was one half million charts ago. Yes. How long ago? How many years? 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. And, and so now lots of people are using it all over the country. And uh uh, in Alaska, even too. some of the world actually. I've yeah. had people even want to get them in Australia. They're like, I don't care if it doesn't work over here. I think I want to yep. get one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'd love to uh, get a close up and show you how the chart works. Yeah, we're going to show you guys right now a little how this chart works. All so right, some of you right guys we know already have this, but in, or a lot of you guys, it'll be interesting. You guys will get something from this. And thing. there are some updates, and for the yeah. couple bucks that it is, you might want to update it too, just in well, case. Had it for a while. And I'm going to try to show you some of the things that you can do with it that's not obvious on the surface, if that's all right. Here. All right, let's see if we got this now. Tell me when you get it there. All right, let me see your phone. All right, let me see. I'll use mine. All right, you guys, bear with us now. We're, this is live, off-grid, no studios, no luxuries. I'm going to get this light going here for us. Hold on. And we will be ready in there three, two, one. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. All right. We got to try to get the shadow. Okay. It. There you go. All right. So let's see what you got. Okay. What you do is you slide. Yeah. Hold this. on. There's a little bit of a glare. All right. Hold on, Stace. Don't worry. Well, this is going to be tough business. I can see it's kind of pixely the closer we get there. All right. Go ahead and see what you got. Man, that's not too happening. All right, go ahead. Let's All right. <clears throat> what you do is you slide this frost line right here on the horizontal calendar, which is above right there. Okay. And uh, for if you're up in Wisconsin, the frost is in June. If you're down in Louisiana, it's uh, February. Okay. And here in our area, we set it at mid-April on the calendar, which is right there. Once it's in place, each column on the chart is a week. And the chart gives you the first outdoor planting for each garden vegetable, uh, beginning with the cold crops like peas and spinach and cabbage, and ending with the warmer weather crops like peppers and tomatoes and okra that have to wait until after the... Um, danger of frost is passed. And uh, it also gives you the indoor seeding dates. So if you have, uh, if you want to do flats in the house or if you have a greenhouse, you can get your, your seedlings going at the right time so they'll be ready to go outside. 
And then the green check marks here on the far right, they give you the expected harvest date. And uh, all of this is really nice on a, on a snapshot of the spring season. You can sit in February, you can look ahead three weeks to see what you needed. Uh, you can look ahead six weeks, you can look ahead nine weeks and tell what's needing to happen. So that allows you to time phase your garden efforts. So that's the spring side. What do you do about fall planting? A lot of people like to plant in the fall. Well, hold your horses here. We're not done, but I'm going to get to that. All right. All right. So uh, uh, what if you're in Florida and there's no frost? <laughs> Whop him, Stacy. These are questions coming in now. The minds want to know okay. while we're having a little thing here. So you pull it open and it gives you the seed quantity for a 10 foot row. So you can make a plan with that. <clears throat> the planting depths so that you don't put your seeds too deep in the ground or too shallow, the distance between rows and also the distance to pee between plants so that you don't get them too congested. The chart also gives you the sunlight requirements. Uh, some people have shaded areas in their lawns. They can still grow some of these partial sun items. Also the minimum soil temperature for germination is listed. And that's important because uh, you can just get you a $2 thermometer and check the soil. And that way you're not wasting your money having to reseed them again because you went out too early and, and did your planting before it was warmed up. The Down here on the slide, it gives you the approximate produce yield, like how many pounds of green beans per 10 foot row. You know, Stacy, if you're gonna can 80 pounds of green beans, how many rows does Doug need to plant to get you that? And, and I then, would be fermenting them. Mm -hmm. I yes. I would be canning them. I think I want to learn about your fermenting, yes. okay? We'll get you hooked up. Over here on the far right is the companion plants. And that's, uh, many people are learning, trying to learn about companion plants right now. When you plant them next to each other, they nourish one another under the ground. It's a little bit like fertilizer. It's less expensive. And... Uh, uh, really worth trying. So this is the spring side of the chart, Doug, and you can flip it over and slide it to your fall frost date. And uh, now it gives you the last planting to have a nice, uh, last planting week to have a nice fall garden. So, and I highly recommend doing a fall garden a lot of times we're still eating off our fall garden in uh, at Thanksgiving when the kids come home, you know. Yep. And <clears throat> my record was January. I got to January. You got to January. That's pretty good. I know I've eaten spinach out of the garden at Christmas time, yep. because we just had a mild fall, you know. And and talk about something that'll grow in the cold weather, arugula. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We'll talk about that more when we get so, to this. Uh, if folks don't know their frost dates, their local frost dates, that's okay because the instructions come with the frost dates on the back for the United States and Canada too. And it gives you both the spring and the fall frost date and it, uh, it lists it by state and then by city. So you can just find a city near you. Hold on a second now. We'll have to just kind of change this around a little bit. Everyone gets to see our stove. Yeah, you guys, we're trying hard to do this for you. You know, we're not a high-tech organization here or nothing. We're just doing the best we can. We don't have uh, the best lighting. And, then uh, you know, seeing this stuff makes it hard. I'm trying to turn off this flashlight. You know, we got a lot, of, a lot of moving parts going on here. But we want you to have the information. That is what's most important is the information. So now we're going to get back over here we're so you can actually see some human beings. Yeah. It's very painful. Yeah, uh, but you guys kind of got the idea. Yeah. And once you get the card, chart in your hands, you're going to be seeing how it works. And we're going to answer some of your questions now, like what do you do if you're in Florida? Plus talk about his paper. And there's an off-grid code. So we got a lot of stuff going on yet. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, what I, and I do like, because you did, when did you add this paper? Uh, no, that's been there all the time. But it's been getting, getting, well, bigger, bigger. It's been getting it's bigger. I'm getting calls from people in in Alaska and they, they asked me, please add the frost dates yeah. for Alaska. So I did that. So it's all over. So yeah, so that's cool. 
Yes, and uh, Houston also got a call from people in Houston. Please add Houston. the prostates. We're wanting to use it. Yeah. <laughs> so it works anywhere in the northern yeah. hemisphere. Yes. And also it tells you like how much, like you said, how much if you put per rows, how much yield to expect, so to speak. It has the fall and the sp uh, spring planting guides on it. Yes. The slide just keeps pulling out. Some of the crops that are on the chart are... Let me read them to you here. Uh, <clears throat> onions, peas, spinach, cabbage, cauliflower, radishes and turnips, beets, potatoes, broccoli, leaf lettuce, carrots, chard, that's like Swiss chard, uh, green beans, and they're bush beans, but um, pole beans plant about the same time. Mm -hmm. Sweet corn, cucumbers, summer squash, melons, peppers, tomatoes, okra, and pumpkins. So you guys are going to go to the link offgridwithdougandstacy.com, hit the shop tab, and scroll down to Clyde's Garden Planner. When you guys are checking out, type in Off Grid, yes. and he's going to send you... I'll send you um, a list of very helpful garden ideas. Uh, and let me give you an example. <clears throat> uh, should you make your rows in your garden north-south or east west. Aha! Inquiry minds want to know, but we won't tell you here. It does matter. It yes, does matter. It does matter. Trust yeah. me, we had we learned. It you does matter. I mean we're not gonna tell them. No, tell no them. Tell they them. gotta get the down. <laughs> no. You gotta get the free information when you buy you the chart. You can tell them tell them that one. That's Go the ahead. cliffhanger. Tell them oh, yeah. You, you you plant them your row should be north to south. And the reason is because you want to reduce the amount of shading that occurs in your garden because the majority of your plants need full sun. That's right. Okay. And so if you have your rows north and south, when the sun goes, it's going to create the shadow on everything behind it. If you do the, E as it goes east and west, if you're doing them east and west, the rows are going to get sun all the way through. Y'all, this is amazing information. And y'all, seriously, the chart, it's like seven dollars it's like the best seven dollars yeah, you'll ever spend yeah. a lot of people actually get them for their friends and families stocking stuffers think ahead you know for the end of the year maybe some spring gifts or something but definitely for yourself if you're new or if you're an older gardener maybe you forgot about some of this stuff can help you keep your game on point with growing stuff so they want to think are, are you the man that was after us they want to know if he was the man after that us. was clyde he had and, his clipboard yeah and they they want to know clyde if you're a city slicker clyde is no city He's slicker no slutty, so no. No. he lives in the country he grows cattle too we'll talk a little bit about growing his cattle uh here at, towards the end here with you guys he is a seasoned homesteader and he definitely grows his food and meat yes, yes. i have about uh uh 50 uh Cold Hereford and Angus mix. That's crop. right. Okay, good. And that keeps them busy. It does. Yes. And he has kids and they all have like music abilities. So they even have like one of those down home bluegrass bands. <laughs> it is pretty cute, y'all. We've heard them play. That's it's nice stuff. Down in South good. Missouri near Branson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Cha Cha says, Clyde, your slide card has saved me a lot of aggravation. Thank you for creating such a useful tool. Yes, and it keeps yeah. you on point. That's yeah. why Stacy and I got it. We well, didn't know. I don't know how anyone could remember all that information. Right. You know, in fact, uh, one guy told, wrote me and said, uh, it's the best quick reference that a gardener can buy. Right. And, uh, I'll, and that's a pretty nice uh, compliment. I think so. Yeah. Uh -huh. And oh, it's Jennifer, easy to handle, too. Jennifer got stunned by a yellow jacket today and used the big Benson Eye Clay. clay. Yeah, I knew that was good. coming. Ah. That's good. Yellow jackets are out pretty early. Everything is out pretty early. Yeah, and I'm worried about the bees because they had a warm bunch of days. Then we had this really cold day. It dropped from like 78 or 80 degrees or something down to like 10 within 24 hours. Low High the next day was 25. I'm looking out there today with 79. It was pretty minimal activity, so I'm going to go take a good peek on them tomorrow. So, How, how many hives do you have? Just one right now. Just one, yep. yeah. Hmm. You don't want that queen to get out in the warm weather. Yeah, I mean, mm. you know, that'll mess them up, and then it, especially if they get zapped with the cold right quick. All right, so about your uh, uh, garden planner. Yes. It works everywhere in the northern hemisphere. And you just slide to your first frost. So most people know when their last frost date in the spring. 
Ours is around what? May. Oh, April no. 15th. Yeah, April no, hold 15th. Hold on. There's actually two frost dates in the spring. <clears throat> There's your average. Right. Okay. And, it, and the frost can come 50% of the time before the average. Oh, it's the weather thing. 50% after the, the average. And then there's the frost free date. Uh, and the frost free date has to do with you have a 90% chance that there'll be no more frost after the frost free date. And the chart is designed to incorporate both of those dates in there. Uh, if you look real close, you'll see that uh, four weeks after the average, and this is nationwide, four weeks after the average is the frost free date. So the chart is designed so that those uh, warm weather crops that are tender will be planted after the frost or, right. they, or they will come up after the frost free date. So it's trying to make it so that you would increase the likelihood of success with right. your garden. Yeah. So some stuff, you if you plant it early, like so it's getting from seedlings going, you would bring those out after those dates. And then right, start exactly. Them in there. That's exactly right. Yes. Uh-huh. That way you don't have money invested in dead plants. <laughs> that, yeah, I know it's. It, we've been having been extra warm, that. extra warm weather now, you know, and so it's like I kind of want to put some stuff out, you know, yeah. that they're starting to go and see what happens, and then if it does get colder, because it seems like we're not going to get much going on, then I'll cover it up, and if it does go, then I'll. That's just my experiment, and if it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, and if you can get so busy that. You don't even have time to cover it yeah. and get caught. Yeah, you can get caught too, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, Cabo, Cabo Guide in Canada, there's no discount when you order the calendar. You can still order it in Canada, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, but you just type in off-grid so he knows it's you from here, and he's going to send you a bonus surprise of a garden kind of ideas for the garden area how to lay out your garden, stuff like that. So that'll has, be a bonus part of your Oh, email. I have a good one. Mary. Hi, Mary. She, she's from the Florida Keys. Oh, okay. Do you have any uh -oh, suggestions yeah. for growing in the Keys? Well, that's uh, similar to like growing in the Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah, I grow in winter. I think they don't really uh, have a winter. Probably down in the Florida Keys, my chart is less useful <laughs> because you, you can go many years without even getting a frog. Right. right. Yeah. 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 But it still is useful. And I'll tell you why. You still have to have, pay attention to your seed quantities, right. your planting depth. And your distance between plants and um, the even the sunlight requirements if you have trees that you're planting around right uh, and the, and the uh, soil temperature if you take tomato seeds and you go put them in the soil and it's below 40 degrees guess what bye bye <laughs> Because see, they, they think they're still the in the winter soil and they don't want to wake up for you guys. Well, they can eat Oh, you know, and Clyde was telling me a, a good thing. You were talking about getting the thermometer. Yes. Tell them about this. This is this is really good for a lot of you because a lot of people don't know, well, how do I know my soil temperature is 65 yeah, degrees? Yeah, you can't be like us where you just stick your finger in there and be like, okay, we're good. So get this so, thermometer. You know, like for sweet potatoes, you do have to have warmer yes. soil. And then whenever you read anything or say, you know, it's like 65 degrees, you need warmer soil. So what's the best way to do that? Well, th this was um, actually... Uh, a lady who owned a garden center in Texas, in Amarillo, Texas, asked me to add the soil temperatures to the chart. And I asked her, what, why, why should I put that on there? And she said, well, my customers are buying seeds from me, and then uh, they put them in the ground too early, and the seeds die. Okay? And I'm like, oh, I see. Then they come back to the store, and they say, please replace the seeds. They all died. But it wasn't the lady's fault. It wasn't the garden center's fault. It was lack of knowledge about when to plant. So we, we uh, did some research and found out the uh, minimum soil temperature for germination and added that to the chart. Excellent. Okay. So uh, you can get a really cheap $2 thermometer. And here, let me advise you about when to take the temperature too. Don't take it during the daytime when the sun is shining on the thermometer. <laughs> Wait until evening, mm -hmm. right after sunset, while it's still light. Mm -hmm. Stick it in the ground. Leave it there 10, 15 minutes. Come back in. Check it. Now you know what the soil temperature is without the, uh, without the sunlight affecting your thermometer. 
we have to apologize in advance as well. You guys are probably crashing old poor Clive's little website he's got over there. Just be patient and just keep trying. Like some people are having trouble with the ch checkout and everything. I mean, we try to do a good job, but there's a lot of you guys. I don't know if his website can really handle this kind of activity going on. <laughs> so just be patient with them. Keep trying. But you guys can get in there and you can get your uh, order in. And then oh, and someone says they use the garden planner just when they plan in their pots. Yeah, like container oh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I can sure. do for anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's about the weather. Yeah. It's really about the weather. Mm -hmm. And not. Uh, uh, yeah, Amy says I use it even for container planting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How deep in the ground are you planting your seeds? It depends what they are. All right. Yeah, let's where you're at. Let's read a couple. Let's of read a here. couple. Yeah. Let's read a couple. So, uh, <clears throat> with. Uh, off grid is the code you put in. Off grid. And that gets you the bonus download extra stuff about the garden. So with peas and growing peas, we like snap peas at our house. We yes, the pots I have this, I have my snap peas in my um, high tunnel, and they're this big already. Mm -hmm. they, you want to get those seeds about one, or maybe a little bit deeper than one inch in the ground. But for carrots, you grow any carrots? Yes. You got to keep them really close to the surface and carrots have a very light small seed if you get that too deep in the ground he can't make his way up um, so yeah. do you guys i'm going to give you a little nugget today nugget so let's put our listening ears on the trick <laughs> this really helped me to start to grow carrots because carrots can be persnickety to yes, get them to can. germinate mm -hmm. so the way to do that is you can just kind of sprinkle them in there or put them in there however you want and then you get like a piece of plywood and you just cut a square or you can have a big board or however much you want. And then what you do is you put your seeds down wherever you put your seeds for the carrots. Then I put the board over them. You water them, then put the board over them and let it set for a couple weeks because that, it takes about two weeks for it to germinate. Okay. And then after two weeks, like I peak after like a week or so, and then you lift it up and you'll start seeing all of them coming up. And that's like the most I've ever, ever had happen. And then once they look pretty good, then I'll take it off and let the sun get the chlorophyll and let them go. Mm -hmm. And then that's the best way I, I can grow carrots good now. Yes. And the other way, I have two ways. Okay. The other way is I alternate planting my carrots with radishes. Because radishes germinate very quickly, like 21 days, 21 to 25 days. So they'll go. So I'll do like radish, carrots, radish, carrots, radish, carrots, radish, carrots. So they'll get protected because they're very tender with the sunlight. They don't like a lot of sun on them. So when the radishes are coming up, um, they, they're they there and then the little carrots will come up and then they're kind of protected. So it's like they're the radishes is like the carrot's big brother <laughs> looking out after the carrot. And then the carrots will grow. So those are the two best ways I plant carrots now. And usually it's like uh, the smaller the pl uh, seed, the closer to the top you plant right. it. You yes. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody asked a question, but I forgot what it was. Well, well, one other thing about carrots, the softer the soil, the better. Better, yeah. They like they, it. They got know, it I, I tried to grow them in uh, hard Missouri clay. And oh. I, got, I got little old lady fingers instead of uh, carrots. Then I set up a garden bed, a raised bed, with a really deep compost. Yep. And I got great. Yeah, carrots. raised beds have very good carrots. Yes. And good. potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There is. We're, we're talking about carrots. There's also. I always forgot the name of it. It's a little carrot. It looks like a heart. They're smaller. Is it ox heart? I don't. They're carrots that are. Any. If you guys know what I'm talking about, leave it on the comments. There's a carrot that doesn't go quite as deep. So if you have harder soil, that might be easier to do. <laughs> And you'll stick the thermometer in the ground, you know, just the whole neck of it, pretty much. Like yes. You just leave like a little bit sticking out, pretty much. But you just shove that whole thing in the dirt there. We have one for the compost that we have outside, too. We keep that in there. To tell if the compost is cooking? Uh -huh. Yeah. How long How long a thermometer is it? Oh, shoot. That's like a foot, 16 no, inches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but, for, but for their soil test, they only need just a little bitty one yeah. this big, and they yeah. can do it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So what's the coolest like thing you've ever grown, you think? Like the most unusual? Most unusual? Most unusual. What uh, that? The, the mo most productive thing I've ever grown is a very, um, it's called a Tahitian melon squash. Okay. Do you know what time I'm Heirloom. talking about? I know what you're like. I can picture it. It, it kind of has a shape like this with a bulb on the end yep. of it there. I got 
I, I did not plant that much. They're got, very prolific. I got 90 of them. Yeah. We couldn't eat them all. <laughs> so it's the same thing because I always talk about this zucchini rampicanti. It's a oh, yeah. it's Italian heirloom and it's a it's a squash and it's similar. It's got the ball and it kind of goes around like and a that, trombone. Yeah. And yeah. their one plant is so prolific. You get so many of the squashes yeah. they and then they store very there. good so over the winter good. too. And they're, they're just great. So what are your favorite things that you like to grow? Like, well, arugula. Um, I love arugula. Me too. I love arugula. You plant arugula and it grows in a day or two. You know, you water it and you have a little sunlight and it'll pop right up. So I love arugula. Arugula is a great bitter herb. So it'll help with your digestive process. And it's very good for you. It doesn't have oxalates like your kales and your Swiss chard right. and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good to add if you're growing some greens to add to a salad. Or I especially like doing arugula salad with some beets and some um, pecans and some goat cheese and cranberries. It's a very good salad. Um, but, uh, gosh, that's, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. I like squashes because they will... Potatoes, sweet potatoes, lots of different variety of potatoes like onions and garlic. And I like to plant everything. And herbs, I love herbs. Yeah. I can't really pick one thing. Well, we like tomatoes a lot at our house. And my wife's mother lives with us. She's 94. Okay. She loves tomatoes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I said to her, what things do you want me to grow? And she was like tomatoes and tomatoes and tomatoes. Okay. And some more tomatoes. So we grew a lot. And we grow cherry tomatoes because you can just pop them right in the salad. Right. And we learned a little trick about tomatoes this last year. Uh, we, I grow way too many. Yeah, that's what people do. <laughs> yep. yeah. So you can so, give them away to people. We did that at first, too. We grew a lot of tomatoes. I grew 100 plants one year. Yeah. I brought them in the house, washed them up, and laid them in pans and then laid the pan in the freezer and then dumped them into the a bag. And we've been eating them all winter long. Like uh, this weekend, I cooked uh, omelets. Oh, yeah. And Chop uh, them up in I, there. Just, I just threw the frozen um, cherry tomatoes in the omelet. They were yummy. Isn't oh, food, yeah. food yeah. awesome? Yeah. Yes. Now you can <laughs> grow food so, like that. Now you have to just throw it in have your to refrigerator. Buy it. It was freezer. Right there when we Let's talk about it. this. So he's talking about growing a lot of tomatoes. So the one thing that is really easy, if you have access to a freezer, at the end of the season, you have a lot of tomatoes. Or even during the season and you can't eat them all, you can just get them, put them in some bags, put them in your freezer. And the cool thing about them, or even maybe you're canning them or making tomato sauce or something or, or salsa, salsa, ketchup, any salsa. of those things, you can put them in the freezer and then they're going to come out. You can use them in your sauces if you want to go ahead and make some tomato sauce or tomato juice or if you want to make salsa. The thing is, if you're making the tomato sauce, the skin comes right off. You don't have to worry about blanching or anything. So that's a little tip if you do have extra tomatoes to freeze them because it works out great. And, um, my wife, I, I was sick with uh, cancer years ago and uh, my wife bought an industrial juicer. Right. We juiced a lot of carrots. Oh, sure. My skin turned orange. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it does happen. Like Jack Elaine around there. But we take the tomatoes and juice them. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then use that for our salsa. Hey, grab a salsa. Oh, yes. He brought me. Oh, we have we brought some homemade, homemade salsa. salsa <laughs> that his beautiful <laughs> wife made. And uh, when we make the salsa at our house, we uh, whatever's coming out of the garden. Gets to be giblets in the salsa. Nice. Oh, so this one, this one's marked that says it has a yellow squash in it. Oh, cool! So when you're eat, when you're enjoying that, uh, you'll get a bite of yellow Yay. squash as you're. See, that's awesome. On it, uh, yeah, salsa is very versatile because you can put it on your eggs. You could have chips and salsa. You could have taco night. You could put it on, you know, a sandwich or a pizza. You could do lots of stuff with salsa. Or, or you can, cool. and you can give it as a Christmas present to yep. your children and grandchildren. Yep, it's a and a homemade food from grandma and grandpa. I like it. It's a home run, man. So is the to is tomatoes your favorite one to grow them? Well, it's one of them, yeah. I like peppers, too. Yeah. Yeah, and, I love peppers. I'm and definitely pepper growing girl. what you eat. That's the main thing. It's cool to try a little something here and there. Like, ooh, what is, we actually tried those Chinese... I, I love them. The Chinese red noodle beans. And we actually like them. We've grown them ever since. And yeah. they give you seeds, too. Everything. Grow heirloom. So you get seeds every year. They come right out of that plant. You can plant them for them the next year. So the seeds, you know, we get our seeds from So Right Seeds and, um, uh, in Missouri here. 
And the one thing that I will say is when we start growing our plants and then I save the seeds, every year you keep using those seeds and growing, it gets more and more acclimated to, to, your, acclimated to your weather, your climate, mm -hmm. where you're living. Point. And then they're more and more, they're hardy, they, they taste better. They, the pest resistance is lower. I mean, it's just amazing. So I'm all for that. So you guys, when you click on there to get the Clyde's Garden Planner, you can backtrack on that page and actually pick up some seeds because you know a lot of you guys are starting your gardening right about now. Stacy and I are getting hot and heavy out there. We've been cleaning up the garden, adding dirt to the raised beds, and pretty soon we'll be walking you guys through there as the days get longer. And, and here's uh, another thing when you're gardening and you're doing your stuff, a lot of people just think, oh gosh, I got to do so much. I got to do this. I got to clean my beds. I have to do this. I have to put dirt in here. I'm going to have to plant. I'm going to be here for days. I don't have time. I have to work. I that sounds like you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so what you do is you it don't. Sound just like you. <laughs> well, but, but I'm saying what I've learned over the years is you don't do it all at one time. That's you know, right. you're only going to pick like today I'm going to just do my, you know, my green beans or today I'm going to just do my onions or today I'm just going to put a little dirt in one bed or you know what I mean? You're going to pick right. what you're going to do yeah. or maybe <clears throat> in the morning before you do go do something or and then late at night when you come home. A lot of times I'm out there. I think I have my headlamp on. I have my headlamp on and I'll even go out at night under the moon. That's when you wonderful. like to go gardening the best. Yeah, when it's hot out, that's usually yeah. what I do. But you have, don't make it so it's so overwhelming. You know, just do it when you have a little time. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. I remember trying to put the whole garden in in one day. Yeah. Oh. And, and, I, and I would be exhausted. Yeah, okay? and it's not and fun. <clears throat> then I planted something too early or something too late. Okay. Yeah, because no. you want to get it all in. That's the thing. Everyone right. wants to put it all in and do it all at once. And it's like... Really, you can't like tomatoes and peppers, especially peppers. You need to wait a little bit because well, they're not going to want to grow if it's too cool. Plus, what are you having to neglect to do it all at once? Instead, do it in small sections. Get your it's onion time this week. Get your onions in. It's peas next week. Get your peas Just in. Just slide Potatoes. your little line right on, and it'll guide you right through. It'll yeah. walk you step by step, time inch by inch. Your efforts, right? Inch it, by inch makes it a cinch. Yard yeah. by yard makes it hard. So this calendar will actually tell you, this is the day you do it. This is the day you do it. This is the day you do it. So if and you follow this, you won't even get overwhelmed because you'll be like going through the steps. So uh, I, what I do with this is uh, I'll stick it a pin through it and I stick it on the wall uh, where I can see it. Right. And where Ann and my wife and I are talking about what we're going to do. And uh, honey, it's going to be next week I'm on a put uh, onion sets in. Could you uh -huh. get the onion sets for me and That's I'll right. get the garden ready? Okay. So, I, and so you really I, need two. Well, no, no, you need three. <laughs> three? You need three. And then you need another one that's out with the tools and the seeds and it can get dirty and so what? Right. Okay. But I need one by the bathroom. Well, that'd be good in the reading. Got... <laughs> that's right. Because when you're in there, you're planning and you can be like, look at there. Well, I always tell folks, get a third one because there's going to be a friend of yours that you... Wish you had one right. to share with them. Is that why you have a three-pack deal? I do. It's You're a, so it's slick. It's a deal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, guys, get your Clyde's Garden Planner. Do yourself a favor. Don't get overwhelmed with gardening. And let his system kind of help you along when to plant, when to harvest, how much to expect, all the dates, the times, the the you know, just kind of walking you through the whole thing. It's actually even good for older gardeners because sometimes we get complacent because we're doing it all the time and then we get wrapped up in something and we kind of forget so this kind of helps keep you on point as well yes and, uh, so then we, he was also talking a little bit about companion planning which yes. i absolutely love in the raised beds it's the most amazing actually i was just talking to they're starting a community garden at our local ymca mm -hmm. and i was talking to the director there and saying that you know this is the best way to plant because you can get so much and my rule is always in your raised beds to always put a flower a beneficial flower like marigolds everyone likes marigolds they good help to deter pests but i them. like them because they taste amazing they make great teas um and they make wonderful little things on top of your sandwiches or salads or tacos um you can just cut the petals on there and they're nutritional for you as well as you can like i say make a like iced tea out of them um and they're going to help repel the pests so putting an herb so let's say in your garden you want to put some um basil 
and you want to have some marigolds in there and then you have your tomatoes and maybe a pepper plant and some lettuce you know you can kind of mix it all up in there and once they start to grow in your raised bed they're all going to be up high and they're they're going to cover up where there's any open dirt and then you won't have to worry about weeds so you just have to weed at the beginning watch it you know just kind of pick it out and once they get established then you're not going to need to weed anymore and so that works out really good but there's a great book for companion planting called carrots love tomatoes and it will give you all the different scenarios like well can i put this with this can i do this with that and then that way it'll help because each of these plants kind of help one another and what i was going to talk about the drudgery of the gardening is when stacy and i started off our mentors don't forget was a family of Amish, so we had 10,000 square foot garden when we first started Who had 15? There's 15 there people 15, in the family. We had here. five rows of strawberries that were like 50 feet long. It was crazy, and so that really caused us, like after the second year, we started dialing everything really back, and then when we moved into raised beds, that was really a good trick for us. Yeah, same for Really me, helped yeah. out a lot. It, it, as you get older, it gets tougher to, <laughs> to waddle down there and get the weeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. Noe says. He says, you know, you can always tell the, the youngsters start off in the ground, and the older they get, all of a sudden the raised beds show up, and then the raised beds get higher and higher Well, and higher. the funny <laughs> thing is, is now that in our Amish community, I am noticing so I'm noticing many it right people. now in the homestead community on the YouTubes. Well, but I'm noticing a lot of yeah. Amish now are getting a lot more raised beds, and they were starting lower, and now they're getting higher, yeah, too. Yeah, and I've noticed yeah. a lot of people, uh, uh, living traditions transitioning into all their raised beds. It's, it's just, y'all, you can find it all you want. You're also... Con- but they work good. You're controlling... Your soil, yeah, I mean, soil is it so warms cool. up I mean, better. If you're doing a flat garden, one of the things you definitely want to do is get a soil test done in advance because there could be something missing from your soil that mm-hmm. you need to, to amend it. Okay, yes. and can you imagine you got your whole garden planted and spent all the money and time, and now it won't grow because it's low on nitrogen? Yes. Okay. Get, you know, soil test costs maybe thirty dollars less than that here in Missouri. And if you guys and actually you don't need to take it every year, you can yeah. take it every four years. You just get know? an idea about it. Yeah, oh, and it in. Redmond actually, if you guys use the Redmond link, they have a soil test kit that you guys could actually get and do it right from home. That's Redmond Agriculture. Yes, yeah. Redmond mm-hmm. Agriculture mm-hmm. link. Mm-hmm. Or here's another thing: maybe you, you can't afford the thirty dollars and you don't want to do a soil test. So te- uh, you could also just do things. After it rains, lift over bu- buckets and pots, get a bunch of worms, start putting worms in your soil to start amending it because yes. you know there's that is very helpful. Worms are great. Yes. Um, you could even get worm castings and put them in your soil just in you know case. Um, we're talking about nitrogen. Mm-hmm. I did a video on it. The freest, easiest way to get nitrogen is from urine. So you can save your urine. Make sure you're not taking any um, medicine or narcotics or anything like that. But our, if you have kids, you get a five-gallon bucket, uh, you know, one part of it, like here, a little bit, here's the bottom of the five-gallon bucket, and then here, rest of it is going to be water. You're just going to put a little bit of the urine in there, fill it up with water. That is a very wonderful nitrogen-type thing you can water. I water, actually, my house plants, you know, a lot of the plants with that. Um, you can add wood ash to it, so that would be another inexpensive way. If you put a cup of wood ash in that, too, that could add a little bit more. Um, you know, you hear about the NPK fertilizer that you buy at the store. So these are other ways to do it. But if you want to really, you know, narrow it down, you could go ahead and get the test kit and you really know what you need. Like what you're, you know, do you yes. need potassium? Do you need, you know, whatever you're, you're, you're missing, you can, you can fix it and fine tune it that way. But there are other ways. Cause I know there's a lot of people that can't afford that. And if they can't, then, you know, do that. Like for years in the beginning, after rain, I would get the kids, I would we'd go doing stuff, getting the worms. We get bucket loads of like the earthworms and the worms that pop up and the wigglers and I put them in the raised beds and I still do it and it's great and, and they really help and then they're just going to keep multiplying and over the time your soil will get better and better and better as you go on. All you have to do is click right there. I'm leaving the link over and over and over for Clyde's Garden Planner. You don't have to Google it. You don't have to chase your tail about it. It's just right there. Just click that right there. Your Another window will open up. And it'll take you right there. Just make sure you type in off grid so you can get the bonus download information. Yes, and there's that. That is another 
one of those line items in that bonus is getting the soil test done. Oh, for sure. And you know, the, it's not just the NPK, it's the acidity level of yes. your soil, the amount of organic material that's there, and what they call the cation exchange rate. That's right. Which is, uh, the, basically it's the electrical charge of the soil. Right. If it's not right. And you Hold on, what was it? If it's the, the what charge? The, the electrical charge of your soil. The electrical <laughs> charge of the soil. I'll tell you what, you're really... Stop it. You're shocking me, Doug. I'm shocking. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not right, then what happens is you add the fertilizer and it rinses right back out. Man, do you guys so hear you, this you gotta have the right. You got to have the right charge in your soil. So Electroculture, that's right. Getting the soil test is really a smart idea before you invest your money and your time. And uh, in either whether it's a raised bed or a flat garden, you know, but especially with a flat garden, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're then not, you can know what's up. you don't know what's what you've got there in the yard, yeah, mm -hmm. yep, throw them all in there, all those worms, Peggy, whatever you can find. Mm -hmm. They made the dirt, and the dirt don't hurt. I'm using electroculture in my garden and greenhouse, and it works. It does. So, we're, yeah, because I have, I'm getting, actually, I have all of what I've been collecting. She's collecting. What's good for hump bums? What's good for what? Burns. Aloe vera. Yes. Mm -hmm. Vincent uh, I clay. Lavender essential oil is uh -huh. very good for a burn, too. Uh, Apple yeah. cider vinegar. Benton I clay. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on what, you know, how how bad is it, too. But those are all good. And then here, we're talking about electroculture. So you use the copper wire, and you go, you know, you at least want six-foot, you know, stick. Generally, you want it from your property if you can get it. If you can't, you can get a dowel rod at the store, and then you just wind it around. And then if you want it more of an electrical charge, you can use crystals, you know, these rock, you know, rocks. What voodoo magic is this? So, so you, you're going to put it at the top, and then you want to make sure the coils of the copper go in the ground at least, you know, at least six inches, because you were just talking about the electrical, the ground is charged. You know, yes, when we have right, lightning yeah. and thunder and all that, that's putting nitrogen, it's electrically charging, you know, we're electrical beings too. So when you put this on the top, that's just going to help harness all that energy, and it's going to help the plants to grow because it goes into the earth, and it will make them grow even, like, better. So I'm looking forward to putting a lot more of these uh, electroculture rods into our raised beds and look at the difference because the amount of people and the testimonies yeah, has gotten it works. crazy. Yeah. Yes. Listen, if you are going to test your soil, unfortunately, with the raised beds, you'll need to test test each bed because each bed's going to stand on its own. Yeah. And you'll also want to be rotating your crops, even in your raised bed, y'all, because certain crops are depleting certain minerals and stuff from the soil. So we always are moving our stuff around in our raised beds. So that's one thing you got to think about as well, except for like we have over evasive like herbs and stuff, and those to get their own dedicated bed. Over evasive yeah. herbs. You know what I mean, like mint and stuff like that. Well, and the other reason to move them is because diseases develop. That's right. And if you have the same like crop people. over and over again, the disease is getting stronger. Yes. So you want to move it to break that pattern. Break yeah. So every pattern. time, every year, when mm -hmm. I did it, one bed is something's in it, the next bed year something else. Right. And then also, here's a little note. <clears throat> Let's say you're you're you have squash. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys have squash bugs. Have yeah, you had Mark. squash bugs mm -hmm. before? Yeah. Yes, so Mark. squash bugs can overwinter. So I would not recommend a lot of people, and I was one of these culprits. I put my compost pile kind of close to my garden. Um, and then if you throw your stuff in there, let's say you pull your vines or whatever, and you have the squash bugs in there. You know, you think they're gone when you have winter, but they go underneath everything and they hide and they overwinter there, and then when the um, starts to get warmer out they pop again and they're going to go right at you again so i get when i do talks i get a question how do you get rid of them? how do you deal with squash bugs and i talked to the extension guys and they said there's no poison that we know of that that will kill them okay so but i, I have heard and tried several ideas yes i'm I, Okay, We're trapped. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I think I, you might have one too. Yeah, let's see what yours is. The, the, uh, if you lay a board next to your squash plant and the weather, and it gets warm in the day, the bugs will go under it 
and you can pull the board up and stomp them. And oh, and reduce it. Okay, high five. Right. I like that one. Yeah, That's so like have. a little two by four or something. Yeah, yeah just you know, maybe wood. maybe a four by um, one. Okay, this long. Yeah, you know, yeah. Lay it right next to the plant, and they'll go under it to, to get protection. Oh, everyone gives like, Clyde a high five there. That's a good that was one. a good one. So I like you that. Can round them up with your vacuum. Here's, here's another one. You ready for another one? Okay, good one. Take, go out and water. Take a a bucket with soap in it, yep. and then go out and just water your. Uh, Zucchini plant. Okay. Okay. And then stand there and wait with a little clear glove on. You know, you can get those little plastic <laughs> gloves. And uh, what will happen is the bugs do, the squash bugs do not like to get wet. And they will all come up on the top of the leaves so that they can get some air and get dried off. Uh -huh. And you can just pick them right, pick off them right off and throw them right in the bucket. You can get rid of like 80% of them in an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, Get all the kids out you're, there. You ready for the third idea? Yes, okay. okay. See if he's going to get our idea. Do not put nope. your zucchini plants all together in the same row. No. Right. Move them all, all, around. Them all around because I do that. You, then one plant might be the sacrificial plant. Yep. Right, and they don't get to the other. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's what I do because you'll get one that dies and then the other ones are just beautiful and they get to be huge. Now, and there's another idea for you. Okay, uh -oh. let's see. Uh -oh. This one I heard, and uh, I, I don't know if it works or not, but to get some worm castings mm -hmm. and put them in a nylon. One of I don't have any of those. Stacey's old <laughs> nylon. I don't have those either. And, uh, that's, that's yesteryear. <laughs> and then soak them in a bucket, uh, okay. like a five-gallon bucket, and then you mix some molasses with it. Oh, yeah. With the of, worm casting? Yeah, to kind of with the worm casting tea. Yeah. Okay. okay. In the nylon. And well, no, you you just put the molasses in uh, to the bucket and stir it until it uh, dissolves yeah. into the water, and that's the sticking, the sticky agent. Oh. So you put so you're making like a fly. So track. you're gonna right. put the worm. You're gonna put the nylon over the sticky molasses. You no, in the, the water. Coats it. You're stick the nylon in the, in the sticky water. Yeah, yes. put the nylon yeah. with the worm castings in the water. Okay. Worm castings is like it'll, the way. It'll, it. turn, it'll turn the water brown. Yes. Yeah. Then you put some molasses in it, stir it. Then uh, you put it into a sprinkling method, and you sprinkle it on right. top of your zucchini. And uh, the, the uh, squash beetles don't like... But you can't confirm this one. I can't confirm it, yeah. but uh, I learned about it from a guy at uh, Red Bud farms and they sell worm castings oh well and no I, wonder and had, I, I know i love worm castings that's had, one of my favorite he had the recipe the yeah the recipe online yeah, right and he said you know you do this and what will happen is the worms or the squash beetles they don't like worm castings right so they want to get away from them Interesting. so that's what i do for my thing every year um because i have really good soil you know because i chop and well drop. let's tell them our trick just hold on no i'm gonna tell them no, just listen, right here now we're right talking here. about worm castings uh, <laughs> so what I do is I sprinkle worm castings over all my beds, and then I have a little hoe, and then I hoe it in. Every every raised bed gets worms castings. Yes. So I love worm castings. I am a big advocate. They're good so anytime. They're great. And if you are wanting to get a good deal on them, Costco has a huge bag. <laughs> Every you can't year go around there, they now, have ESG scores. We talk okay. about. <laughs> so here's our here's our bug. Worm. Here's our trick. Let's hear it, and we can confirm it actually and it does works. Work. So everybody wants to plant their zucchini, especially early in the season. So all the pest load, everyone's waking up, everyone's doing their thing, happens early in the season. Wait to do your zucchini like toward the end of June. Yes. Really? When you do it later, later you're in between the cycles, possible. and then usually it works better. Well, you know, that can, I can confirm that because I plant zucchini in the fall. Yeah. For my yeah. fall crop. Yeah. And I'm always like, man, no these, bugs. Bugs. these things are clean as a Yes, yes. that's yeah. it. Yeah. That's yeah. why. Yeah. They have a short life cycle and they come out just right then and then yeah. that's why. Or just do it later, like much later in the season because they don't take that long to grow. And besides yeah. that, um, fall zucchini makes great giblets in your salsa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a lot of you guys, if you can wait. Just we cannot confirm nor deny do that, but we are going to. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, man! An hour goes by fast, doesn't it? It does, man. Yeah. So, guys, get your Clyde's garden planner. Do yourself a favor, you know, and just take a little bit of the load off. Just let Clyde oh, guide have, you through the garden here's season. Here's some good questions. Wait, Hold on. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, Clyde. I do have a comment I want to make before we close, so don't let me get past on that. Uh, you want to do it now? Yeah. You know, uh, I wanted to say thank you to all of. 
Doug and Stacy's listeners and to Doug and Stacy, because uh, as a result of your showing my chart to your folks, uh, we were able to pay off our farm. <laughs> and, uh, we love this stuff. So we you guys. Uh, <laughs> want to uh, be thankful. I mean, uh, so many people purchased last year, and I know some of you had to wait because uh, we were so overwhelmed with uh, chart sales. Yeah. But I wanted to let you know that 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 um, that effort has helped us a great deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's sweet because you know he he it. took a risk. Thank you. He started a, his own little business with the charts, y'all. Him and the wife drive around. They used to go in the, back in the day to all the little garden centers all over the place, and they would talk about their little chart and stuff. You know what I mean? So he's built his little business out of his idea, okay? And he, this is why we're celebrating this as well. And then and then now, because of, you know, the Internet and, and hanging with us serendipitously, you know, we present the chart, and now it's helping his life and helping your life. This is how all this stuff's supposed to work, and that's why they don't want us connecting like this. And, and watch out, because if you have an idea, and it's valuable to a lot of people, yeah, it might just change your out, life. Go for it. It might turn out to be valuable to you, too. And what, right. what, what's the old saying? You know, you can get what you want by helping other people get what they want. That's the main thing, mm -hmm. is by helping people get up. But they're training everybody now to get what you want and right now, and don't worry about anybody else. That's what they're training you in for. And groupthink. So that's what we're trying to break. Okay, Brando has a good, great question. She says, how do you save arugula and spinach seeds? So what I always do in all my gardens is when you are growing something, you need to let something go to seed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's say I have a whole big bed of arugula. So my arugula is going and I'm cutting it and I'm, you know, eating it and all that. Maybe on the edge, I'm going to say, okay, over here, I'm going to save those. I'm just going to let them go. So they're going to go up to seeds. They'll have their little white flowers. The pollinators will love them. And I just let them go. And then when they, they get to the point they're dry out, then I'll take them. Um, and then I'll put them in a, you know, a little envelope and then I'll write the year and I'll write what it is. And there's my arugula seeds. Lettuce is the same way. You're just going to let it go and it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And then a little, little head comes up with the flowers, let it go to seed. So always save, you don't want to eat everything. You want to save a little bit to go to seed and don't think, you know, oh, you know, this is weird. It's great too, because you're going to help with the bees and the pollinators also. So always let all your stuff go to seed. Okay. <laughs> Comment about that. Watch out for arugula because if you leave it <laughs> get too off the long, chain. if you leave it too long, you have arugula okay, everywhere. The, the pods they pop open. Yes, and the seeds you start to lose them. So you gotta kind of. They Where look, do you lose them to? Well, they drop into the ground and, 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 the, and, the, and then everywhere. more arugula the, pops I, up. I had them all. They're growing all around my edge of my right. of my raised bed on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you want to know something? We have we have we have we used to have rocks where we were, but I got to a point because everyone's like, "Oh, I have to have a perfect garden." For me, sometimes if the seeds blow somewhere and they go and they're in the ground or whatever, I'll just let it land. go and then I'll just like sometimes I'm all out of arugula and then there might be that plant down there. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> and then I'll just take it out. If it's in a nice spot, not like exactly where I walk, but he's true. That's true. But the one thing about arugula that I do like is they are in little pods. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like lettuce is a little different because they're, it's, it, it's more like CD it's on the top. Very light. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. light. It just kind of flights, flows away. But the arugula at least is self-contained in a little pod, which is nicer. So, um, yes, you have to be careful of that because you'll get seeds everywhere. We are trying to help you from stop you from starving y'all straight up. I mean, we're, we don't just, I mean, I actually believe this stuff. So I don't know what to tell you. You don't have to have the crystals on your copper stuff when you do it. This is just added bon benefit extra. bonus stuff. Yeah, you don't have to. But if you have like quartz or you have like an agate or something or stones around, um, lapis has, is very high energy too, and the crystal. We're gonna have a crystal rock girl at the conference. In yeah, May. she's gonna have lots of crystals. Come that to you the can conference, put on your thing. Yeah. The Homesteading Life Conference, May seventeenth and eighteenth in Vandalia, Missouri. Clyde will be there. His lovely wife will be there. He's gonna be talking about gardening and maybe. Oh, and you're gonna. He's gonna talk cows. about cows. Yes, he, he's he a cow man. Cows. Yeah. So he's gonna be there. We're gonna have a lot of great speakers. Curtis Stone will be there. He's an awesome speaker. Uh, Dr. Jones, Mr. Jones, he'll be there. 
Uh, we really have a great lineup for you guys planned out already. Plus, yeah, and course, Connie Stacey from Wise and Woman in the Natural yes. Path from Wise Woman Botanical. Redmond will Ag will be there. They'll be talking yes. about raising your livestock using their products and getting the minerals into your livestock because that food that you eat actually provides your body with minerals and so. And they're going to also be talking about the soil and the soil testing, that's right. and the soil okay, test kit, good. and all that stuff too. That's right. So we have a yep. lot of great information for you guys at the Homesteading Life Conference. Zach Bauer. Zach Bauer will be there. He goes off grid. American grows his own set. food too. Raises two boys. I mean, y'all, we really work hard with trying to get as much information into your hands as possible. We want you to have full disclosure so you can make the best decision possible. If you fully understand that the water that you drink every day with the fluoride in it is causing you problems, then you'll stop drinking it. And that could change your life. Just that one thing. That one thing could change your life. Yes, definitely don't want to drink city water. Please make sure you filter it. Do it your is, research. It is dumbing you down every year you drink it. Yes. More and more. Okay. Um, oh, I left the M link for the Home Study Live Conference two times for you guys right there. Go. MH says fermented jalapenos are wonderful. Mm. Tastes like jarred jalapenos, but healthier. Do try this if new to fermenting and like spicy foods. MH, that is very true. It's so simple. If you want to can a whole bunch of stuff, you get jalapenos when you're growing jalapenos. You know, you get tons of them. So all you do is you get your jalapenos, chop, 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 pop them in your clean mason jar, and then you're going to cover them with water, but you're going to put a brine in there. So, I mean, this, I can tell you the simple way of doing it. So here's your jar. You cut your jalapenos, chop, 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 chop. chop. So make sure you have about, you know, inch and a half head space at the top. And then in a pint sized jar, you could put, you know, um, you know, eh, maybe a, a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons of salt over the water. Make sure it's filtered water. And then you can, if you want to shake it up, you can. Um, a lot of times I'll mix the, the salt already in the water and then I'll pour it over it. And then um, you can put your fermenting top on it and then you're going to ferment it 10 to 14 days. And it, they do taste exactly like what you're going to get in the store, but they're filled with billions of probiotics that you need to have a healthy gut. So once that's done, you'll take the fermenting lid off and then they're also you're going to put a, a fermenting like a, a puck or a rock or whatever you have, like a fermenting weight you need to put in there to push it underneath the liquid. Um, I've done... Did I do fermented? Did I ever do a fermented jalapeno video? I don't even think I did. Yeah, did I think I? you did. You I have did a lot a of fermenting videos, but um, it's so simple. And then that's it. And then you just put in the refrigerator. And then when you want to put them on your nachos or on the sandwich, you just put them on there. And then you're going to get probiotics out yep. of your jalapenos. Who needs to buy canned ones from the store anymore? Yep. They're very simple and easy. The Homesteading Live Conference. If you go to the website and then hit the speakers tab, all the speakers are there. We have all the information there for you guys. You're on your own with the lodging. You know, we figure that it's mostly adults coming. So you guys can find, find out where to stay. It's pretty slim pickings around here. So that's why I didn't really bother with it. So you can find out the best thing that works for you. Uh, but it's going to be a really good time. And it is limited seating. And we're over halfway sold out. Man, this was a fun night tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do I find off-grid land? Well, first thing you got to do is get my booklet, the first seven steps to moving off grid. <laughs> so it can, you know, you can get into a trick bag. I know people that have went out and bought land, built a whole little tiny house shed thing on it and had a knock on the door with some guy with a clipboard. And he tells them that they cannot have this on this property and they have to get rid of it, take it apart or sell it and move it. So you have to know where you're at before you start your hustle. The, the zoning requirements. Zoning, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. So that's one yeah. of the tricks right there. So it's the first seven steps to off grid, and you can get it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com. And also, while you're there, you can pick up Clyde's garden planter and some seeds, and you'll be banging. You'll be off grid with food. <laughs> All right. Okay, dude. And yes, uh, if you guys are following the Amos Miller story, I did do a video about it. Oddly enough, a lot of people are watching it. I don't know if YouTube's blocking it or something. It was a very good video, very good information. But the judge actually sided with the state. So they are stopping Amos Miller from providing food to all of his people in his group and even his own family. And maybe 
this is going to be appealed to the Supreme Court. So you guys are, are letting all of your food security hang on one Amish farmer's fight for your food freedom. So let's make sure we're rallying behind that and we're showing up and getting loud. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the only way this stuff starts stops is if you guys get loud, you know. Always. It's always about that. All right. That's why they are scaring you with the January 6th stuff. Boy, there's some truth coming out tonight. See, that's all psyops to get your mind to think, man, we better shut up and not be protesting out there. They're going to come arrest me at my house and throw me in a hole in the floor and no one's going to know. And I won't get a due trial or anything with my peers or any evidence. They just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. I'm really behind there. A lot of people are asking, where do you get the crystals? You know where else you can get these? You know when you go to any places on a trip or anywhere? <laughs> any you know? hippie places? No, not hippie places, but like if you go to those places like at Grant's Farm or the zoo and they have the area for the kids to pick the rocks and they put them in a little bag. You guys know what I'm talking about, don't you? You can get them there too. A are rock. they crystals though? Yeah. yeah. These are just rocks. Yeah, they're just rocks. Yep. All right, let's see. Any other questions here? See who shows up to take away the right to grow. Nobody. My, this is my side, my line in the sand. I mean, I'm not, we don't go on any buses, trains. The government won't tell me to get on this or that. This is where we end it all at this homestead right here, y'all. Hopefully, you guys are being spiritually fit and getting your minds right. <laughs> Because, I mean, I'm not, I mean, if history taught us anything, man, I don't, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> for shizzle yeah a lot of people have like thank you got garden planters for me my neighbor and my mom oh please do yeah please do do yourself a favor get a bunch of them pass them out on the street corner at the four-way stop help your community out the, the person you hand this to could be a person that helps feed you if this stuff actually breaks loose because you handed them that chart and did you happen to figure out how much you saved Oh, with you the know, money for I didn't the first year. But, but but consider it. You know, we had uh, six children. Okay, and <clears throat> we're feeding them. I, I'm sure we're probably saving like several thousand dollars a year. Sure, oh. sure. And how many years does it take to raise children? And they okay. do eat a lot. <laughs> so say you save for fifteen years times two grand. Yeah. That's thirty grand. Sure, okay. sure. Now, and but that's not all that's happening because uh, health. You're at home with your family. Yes. And you're not out spending money on a bass boat or a golfing, and time away from the family. And I'm not against those things, but this is one of those activities that keeps dad at home. Okay, and father's at home and with the family. That is a healthy long term family benefit. Okay, that's right. And you're also eating food that's good for you that hasn't been treated so that it would last while it was traveling a thousand miles to your residence okay uh you know what you've put in there and uh uh it seems to me it's a the gardening is kind of a ordained home run it's a blessing for, man. Fa for families i mean yes. i could be wrong but that's what it looks like to me and uh, it I'm, is and I, if you're afraid and you haven't even started just start in a little pot listen just try just try it and you know what happens if it doesn't work you know you can always try something else or if let's say it doesn't work right away you have the whole summer to keep trying and to do you know just to do something and it or every year pick one thing to work on you know, you get better and you'll learn. Yeah, okay, I'm going to learn everything about how to grow arugula, or I'm going to learn everything how to grow corn, or I'm going to learn everything about a tomato. But so that's what you think about. What would you say are some really good starter crops that are easy? I know arugula would be at the top of the list. Lettuces. If you like to eat it. Yeah, yeah. lettuces are good. Yeah. Green beans, you know, like bush beans or bush yeah. beans are Green simple. Green beans grow really good. Yeah, they're simple and easy to do. You could do... Um, Oh my gosh, not sweet potatoes are easy to do. No, potatoes, are, potatoes really are really easy. easy yeah, do. for a lot of you guys, one of the easiest ways to grow potatoes, just regular potatoes, is in like a five gallon bucket or if you have a feed tub or you can grow them in containers. So simple. And then you just dump them out. Very simple way to grow potatoes. And anybody can do potatoes. And then you'll get a, a dense food that can fill you up too. Sure. Um, tomatoes are easy to grow. They are pretty tomatoes easy. Tomatoes are easy. Peppers are easy to grow. Yeah. Um, you know, I've planted the seeds from, uh, all these mini peppers. Yeah. 
and they produced more all these mini peppers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I thought they were maybe hybrid, you know, and they yeah. wouldn't do it, but they did do it. And I had so many, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, with. <laughs> yeah, no, you can, you, you can, it, it all works. Um, even like popcorn, you know, you can get your popcorn from the store and plant it, and usually it, it'll pop too. Make but popcorn. I, I really agree with you on the green beans. Mm -hmm. They're easy to grow, mm -hmm. and your soil doesn't, you know, the soil doesn't have to be perfect for green beans. No. And uh, if you have uh, like some T posts from a cattle, uh, and you can put up some hog panels, uh, pole beans grow and they produce two and a half times yes. as many beans. I grew them last year. And, I did pole uh, beans. This year, I think I'm going to do Pole beans are really worth cucumbers. growing. Cucumbers. There's yeah. a lot of stuff cucumbers. that's easy to grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and someone keeps asking about what lettuce. The, the lettuce that I grew last year year and the year before that I love and it's very hearty with the heat and I am just in love with it is red romaine red romaine love it and it does really good here in Missouri we're 6b or if you're 6b I don't know what it was but it never tasted bitter even if it was there for a little longer than it needed to be I would just pull the leaves out um I loved it so I grew a bunch of the red romaine and it's one of my favorites uh, I like uh, for salads. We like uh, Hilton cabbage, and it's a Chinese type. Yeah, nap, nap type Looser, cabbage. Looser, yeah. Yeah, and it grows good here in Missouri. Okay. And uh, uh, the leaves make good salad, and then the stalk is almost like a celery. And celery, yeah. I like to have it with peanut butter in it. Really? Yeah. On the cabbage. Interesting. Here. How many yeah. of you guys are going to try the stalk? Yeah, of your your it's cabbage the, with some peanut butter. The name of it is uh, Hilton, but I think almost all the Napa cabbages are uh, in this similar pattern, and you know, they're kind of shaped like this. Yep. And they grow, and they're yeah. looser. They're not so hard. So right. That's, good. that's right. They're and not the one hard. thing you guys, everyone, try to grow some cabbage, and that's early. That they like it cooler, so you need to plant yeah. that early on, mm -hmm. or you want to do it fall. late in your fall garden. Yep. But remember, cabbage is a super, super duper food. It's a cruciferous vegetable. It's good to help with detoxification in the body. It's great to um, ferment, especially because you're going to get muku amounts of vitamin c when you ferment it is it in your ferment book yeah, I, yeah the sauerkraut, there's good. sauerkraut mm -hmm. sauerkraut in there mm -hmm. yeah old clyde wants a ferment book he he's said gonna man, we're gonna get into fermenting yeah. now so he's Jeez. we're gonna get him hooked up with <laughs> yeah. a fermenting book so yeah you want to use the maple syrup in the chocolate tea not the honey the maple syrup's where it's at with the chocolate yeah it tea. tastes a lot better in our opinion with the it's maple game syrup. on yeah chocolate tea you say yes get that at off with doug and Shop tab, chocolate tea. <laughs> Holy cow, and we're going to close it out. Holy cow, we're going to close it out with Clyde talking about his cows a little bit. Oh, okay. You enjoy I that? Yeah, I saw that uh, one fella asked about there that. There was one fella. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. So let's hear, Let's. does anybody here raise cows? Now, most, probably, there's probably most of these folks have a cow, cow or two maybe around the homestead, I'd imagine. We don't have a cow. Because we don't want to have the responsibility. He's just down the street or she's down the street. And we like the sheep. But Clyde here likes the cows. What kind do you have? Uh, I have uh, pulled Hereford Mamas. Mm -hmm. And I've been um, mingling them, co-breeding co them with Angus. Angus. Okay. For the meat. To get the uh, black baldy. Which is, uh, you know, if you put two breeds together, then you have what they call hybrid vigor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the animals live they grow better, live longer, have more babies once you mingle those two breeds. So I've been breeding the polled Hereford and Angus. And now, what does that mean, polled Hereford? Polled means that there's no horns. No horns. And the Hereford has a white face and a kind of a brownish, reddish yeah, like uh, hair. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, and also the excellent part of a polled Hereford is that they're very mild-mannered. Mm -hmm. They don't hurt anybody very often. So they're nice to have on the farm. Yeah. And uh, you, if you grain them, they'll almost become pets. And you got to be careful. You don't want them to be too much. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they come running they'll at you, right you right and they'll knock you right over right. Yeah. right. Well, that's well, happened you're a lot. doing milking then or no? Well, no, I tried milking and they were beating me up. And so uh, we didn't decided not to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> that all the milk stays yeah. with the calves. That's where that's where I decided to go ahead and get the pulled Herefords is because they were kind of beating me up while I was trying to milk them. Right. And uh, our farm has grown. We just had six when we first started, five or six. And now we have, let's see, I, I had, um, 
I sold eight last week and we had 50, we had 54. So mm -hmm. now we're down a little bit below 50. Yeah, but there's lots of calves popping out right now. Yes. There's a springtime there. They're coming on. and uh, Imagine that more of God's design. Now he has all these cows. They're popping out more cows. He's selling nine of them, probably making a couple thousand bucks over there. So <laughs> you know what I mean? That pays the taxes, keeps the homestead going. This is the plan the man, the, the steal, kill, and destroy doesn't want you to have. They want you on man's plan. So we... Uh, we, I went to through the state's uh, rotational grazing class okay. yes. and learned how to use uh, um, portable solar-powered poly wires. And my cows have all gone to Clyde School and they learn <laughs> to stay inside. If they can't learn to stay inside, then they go to be on somebody's table. Okay? That's right. Yep. And, uh, uh, you have my, a bad cow, that's what yeah, happens. That's right. My, my neighbor has some land that's very hard to access, and so we talked to him, and he is renting that land to me. So it's it's land that gets flooded very frequently. So it's fertile. So it's fertile, but it's also hard for him to do anything with. Right. But, but with my movable fences, I can go in and graze it, right. and then if I get the warning, you know, that a big flood is coming. <laughs> I pull the fence wires and we pull the cows. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, and then Working we, with the land. Yeah. And then we, and so the rotational grazing is allowing us to use land that was really unviable. It was yeah. it was laying fallow. Right. So, uh, and and something about that, you know, in the in the Old Testament, the guidelines were that once out of every seven years you were to allow your land to grow right. fallow. Sabbath, right. right? Okay? And what it was, it, he in the scriptures it says, "Let the land rest." Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when you're doing rotational grazing, you're really doing that because you're putting the cows on the land until they eat off the grass, and only just a short time, and then you move them, and then you give the grass a long time to so grow they, back right, and rest. Right. And the the when I went through the state program, uh, they showed me that. With the same land, you can grow 60% more beef if you'll rotate yes. and move them around. Do you, do you guys move them Oh, around absolutely. Around? Yeah. yeah. And so you basically, We're big proponents on it. It gives you more grass yes. to eat, and the grass that you have is healthier. Keeps yep. down on parasites. Okay. No, 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 I'll tell you something crazy I'm trying. Okay, are you ready? Uh, <clears throat> there's a lady at, out west that teaches cows how to eat weeds have i ever told you this about this before no but they should her name, her name is kathy vaugh and uh uh <clears throat> your cows uh, there's cattle farmers listening can be taught to eat weeds that they don't normally choose for example pigweed yeah. yes my cows eat pigweed okay now in goats and then we'll eat them but cows usually don't right and there's a list of about 75 weeds that there's this program that you take your cows through and you can teach them to eat weeds. <laughs> How do you do it? Now like, are you going to potty train they... them next? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Then we could we could cut down on the flatulence <laughs> and that would help the CO2. Or we could <laughs> global warming. Or we'd have the manure already piled up for us. Right, so. right. No more So how do you around. teach cows to eat, eat, to eat weeds? Okay, Don't well, give them other food. It's a, what you do is you you go to the farm store and you buy eight kinds of feed that they've never had before like uh wheat flakes and soy okay oh. right, hold this on just a sample now. Just hold on and then for five days you feed them some in buckets in the tubs you know you feed them something unusual in the morning and in the afternoon for four days excuse me and then on the fifth day you go out and get your weeds and you take a cutter and you snip the weeds up real small. Okay, so it's almost like granular. Yeah. yeah. And you put them in the buckets. And they, for four days in a row now, they've had something that they've never eaten before that turned out to be yummy. Yeah. Okay. So then they think that's yummy. Yeah. So they'll eat the weeds and then they'll go away. And that's what mine did. And this lady, you know, said, now wait. And they came back. And they finished the weeds, okay? Then I took video of them eating the pigweeds on my property. Man, this they is just right how out, they trained They you. went right out and ate it. 
You know? Well, it's just like with children, you know, like if everything, it, y'all. You, everything. you have to give it to them a few times for your taste buds to get acclimated. Well, so yeah. it's kind of the same well, thing too. They're breaking their first of all the the foods Habits. that they haven't eaten before. We break their pattern yeah. by sure. eating them. Sure. And then when they ruminate, they realize that was really food. Okay. Now they're willing to give this next food a chance to ruminate on it. And, and, and the cows don't know if it was really food until after they've gone through the cycle of rumination. And it goes from one stomach to the right, other. Right, right. Yeah. right. So that's what this lady's teaching. And I tried it and it worked. Okay. So then the yeah. next time you have a certain weed that you want to get rid of, you're going to have to do that again. Well, and that's, that's the, what she's teaching basically is it's weed control, but there's another benefit. And that is that many of the weeds... I hope I'm not boring you guys, but many of the weeds have higher protein value than grass. Yes, of it's course. It's closer to alfalfa. Yes. Just so what's happening is on your farm, you're taking your weeds, which is trash, and converting it into value. Right. Okay, but it, but you have to get through the learning curve with your work. cows. Yeah. You have to educate your cows. Yes. Okay. So because yeah, the weeds I call them wild herbs. They are the nutritional value is just amazing Man, compared to like yeah. All this stuff. Yeah, we'll they're... be ta talking more about that at, at the, the conference. At his yes. conference. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I have a few questions here. So and yes, Dr. Leo will be there, and it's the only conference he's doing in 2024. Did you know that? No, I did yes. not. Yes. 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 So Kristen says. This is very important, so listen here. Listen up. Do you let chickens walk in the garden and eat the bugs? They do not go in the garden when not you when, have, we're when things are growing in it. Yeah. When I have it's done, they were have been in the garden, but it will be locked up because they will destroy every single thing that yes. you have in there. We're kind of crazy around here, y'all. So this is my philosophy. See, my chickens, they have legs. And they like to run around and they like to eat bugs and scratch and leave their manure behind. They like to go out to the pasture and spread out all the poop out there and make sure the parasites are getting ate and everything. My chickens love to walk around. But my garden, it does not move anywhere. It does not like to walk around. It stays right where it's planted. So I put a fence around my garden and then I let my chickens do everything. But I see a lot of people put all the fencing around their chickens and then they leave their gardens wide open for the deer and the goats and the sheep and the... How, how do you make sure that the chickens are all in at night then? They come in they every night automatic. In. They just yes. automatically. They and don't we, want to get eaten. We so don't let them go in there, so they're trained not to go in there. Once we shut the gate, if we catch any of them, there's maybe a few out of all the ones we have that'll try to fly up and over, and then we'll just shoot them with a stick or something like that. Oh, no, oh, no he's talking about how do you keep them in at night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of times, though, of them getting over, then they won't go back in there. But that's how we keep the garden safe from the chickens. There. We kind of lost a few of our chickens. So uh, they weren't going in at night? They, well, I, what I'd do is I, I have a cage for them, you know, and uh, I'd find them in the barn sleeping. Oh, sometimes they do that. But yeah. the problem is that the critters got them in the yeah, barn. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes they'll do that. You'll mm -hmm. get some of them like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so... Dave says, how long will seeds last if kept with low humidity and temps under 70 degrees? You know what, Dave? There's some seeds, like if you keep them at good temperatures, that I know people have okra seeds that from like 30 years ago oh, are yeah, still yeah. viable. Oh, yeah. I know if you keep them and and you just plant them, and we've planted stuff that have been maybe in the heat and haven't been stored very well. This was before we had a root cellar. You know, just throw them out. Years, you got nothing. You to can lose. try them and they see. But they'll, they'll last. I know carrot Store seeds. All the seeds you, can. you know other seeds that don't well, last quite as long. Yeah, they don't pepper, last as long. Pepper, have, have a sip of tea. Pe pepper seeds. Well, you need a drink. They, pepper <laughs> seeds don't last very long. Pepper seeds no, do. right. Yeah. But yeah. all the seeds last longer if you put them in the freezer. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's why they have the big freezer vault with the seeds in it. All right, we're going to wrap it up, man. That's an hour and a half now. Holy guacamole. We got uh, Clyde some drink there. Somebody kept saying, give Clyde a drink there. Clyde needed you. He had a drink. <laughs> All right. Thank you for caring about my... We are running and gunning here. over here. We got we have great people, Clyde. They are yes, we do. That. You guys are they awesome. They actually do care. Give everybody hydrate, a fist bump. Your hydration. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap it up. Go to offgoodwithdougandstacy.com. Hit the shop tab. Get Clark, Clyde's Garden Planner in bulk. Give them to your friends, your family, your kids, anybody who will listen so they can actually have a tool in their, you know, tool belt to grow food. You know, one of the things you need to live, you know, food, water, shelter, and air. And all those things are under attack right now, in case you haven't really noticed. 
Uh, so we want to empower you as much as we can to help you guys grow as much food as you can. And just uh, do something. Do the best. Anything. You can. Anything. And if you're not, if you're not Remember quite Brian, sure, we talked about Brian before. Talk, yes. Say it real quick again. So real quick listening. for you guys to know. And then I was reading someone here also is in a wheelchair. He had um, OCPD or whatever. COPD. COPD. <laughs> he had COPD. Very, it was pretty bad. Right. And he really couldn't do much at all. And um, he just did. I mean, he had. He lived tons. in a senior kind of a thing. Yeah. And he had a back patio. You know, it was like one of those little bitty right out of the door back patios. Very small. But he did like he vertical. Had vertical. He had lots of little things, trays, and then he had plan planters, everything. He was growing he peppers, everything. tomatoes, lettuces, spinach, right on he his did back little everything. patio. Yeah, and all the herbs, everything. But for a lot of you guys, if you want to try do something, you know, you can put a a tomato plant in a pot. You can put some herbs in a pot. You know, you can do a few little things. Have another pot and grow some lettuce. And there you go. You can have lettuce and tomatoes. And, you know, you can do make yourself a sandwich with it. And, and every you year it. you'll grow a little bit more, I promise you. Yeah. yeah. Once you get used to it, or just try one thing. Yeah. And I always say, try something new. Just do something new, or if you want to get good at something. Like, I always tell my gateway into learning. I remember when we first moved here, I had gone to um, one of the Amish families. And the guy, he, he was a younger kid, and he always loved gardening. And Henry! He, yeah. He used to grow... The biggest onions. I mean, every year. That's where we learned our Amish onion trick. Yeah, and so I got good at onions. And then when I got good with onions, then I moved on to something else. So I just kept trying to learn something new. Every year, it's something new. Yeah. What's the Amish onion trick? You got. You have to watch the video. You have to get them in there early. <laughs> And, and always then, keep the dirt away from them. A lot of people yeah. pile the dirt on. You have to keep the dirt away. Yeah, so here, here's your onion. If you have the set, you know, the little bulb, and you put the little... Um, roots here so you have your loose soil all i do when i go in i just go and i push them in a little bit most of the little onion um sticking out yeah. should be out mm -hmm. and just the roots because eventually the roots will go in there right and so once it starts to grow you just leave it alone and you're going to start seeing the little guy come up and then as it gets bigger when you start getting it get bigger then you're going to start pushing the the ground away from it and then that's going to make it get huge honestly i was taught before that like from city people like you push the dirt up to it no <laughs> that'll make a little that do. that's what most little people do onion. that's a little well, onion have it's you ever true. heard the one that you take some of the old fashioned matchsticks and Put them down next to the onion. Boy, he's going way back okay. there now. And it's because uh, <laughs> onions need a little bit of extra sulfur. Yeah. And there's sulfur in the Yeah. Because yeah. 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 that's what they are, sulfur. That's right. Yeah, the old guys told me about that the one. The old but you, timers. You'd have yeah. to use a lot of matches, but that's a great, I like that. You I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. If you get some organic sulfur, you know, and make sure that there's a little extra sulfur because that's what onions need. Nice. Yeah. Look at this guy. Man, you got a bonus <laughs> nugget on the way out the door. I like the little board by the squash plants. I'm going to try the board by the squash right. plants, and I'm going to try and it. I'm going to put a few matchsticks and above don't the Don't forget about the spraying them down. Now you put they, those match heads all in the dirt. The top. Put, kid put the match heads in the dirt. Leave the sticks out, match heads in the dirt. Yeah, that's right. But I grow so many I grow so many onions that would... I, I would get tired of putting mess because <laughs> I, I when I do my onions I, I always put them on the outside of the beds and then I put everything else on the inside love you back Mary Jones y'all we're trying to break the Clyde's garden planner record here tonight so maybe we'll do it if we do it I'll let you know that we did it if we didn't do it you'll never hear about this again all right so make sure you're using yeah. the link to offgrid with Doug and .com. hit the shop tab get Clyde's garden planner everything's dying the computer's going to die. The phone's losing juice. My phone, too. Yep, Clyde's phone, too. And then uh, make sure you get some seeds, too. You know, you can get all that stuff right there. It's the one-stop shop, offgridwithdougandstacy.com with the shop tab. Also, at Offgrid with Doug and Stacy is the events tab. If you do want to go check out the Homesteading Live Conference tickets, you can meet Clyde in person and talk to him and stuff, and plus all of our other great speakers, okay? And Stacy's Woman's Retreat tickets are for sale there now as well. Limited seating. Yep. Do you have any last great words, Clyde? Uh, hmm. To leave our great people with? About growing? About growing? Yes. And so how, well, when you first, did you always have a garden? Don't drag it on now. No, the, uh, <laughs> uh, I started the gardening when the kids came. Okay. And it was really related to 
feeding my family well, spending time with them, and reducing. And now, and look what happened. Yeah. Now you're hooked. But uh, you know, right now is the season throughout most of the United States to start your garden. Right. Okay. And uh, even if you do a small amount right now, you'll have that under your belt for the next season. And the next season isn't next spring. It's next fall. Because that's when there's lots of good growing again. You know, it's amazing. When we got here, the Amish never planted a fall garden. They don't. None really. of them. We got a lot of them going on it now. But they would stop at summer and that would be it. That's it. Really? I guess that's just how they worked into their chores well, and stuff. Well, they just you get know, all the canning. off their radar. That's right. it. That's it. But uh, we got some of them growing in the fall I, now. I was really surprised. Uh, my fall garden is... That's my favorite. Yeah. That's my favorite garden. It's fall. not only really productive. Yeah. It's nicer to be out there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm all not, about it. It's yeah. not so hot. Yeah, yeah, fall gardening is my favorite. And on that note, we'll see you guys on the next video. And remember, ah, the most capable hand is at the end of your wrist. That's the truth. Is that not the truth? Huh? Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's the it was truth. nice meeting you, Clyde. And nothing but the truth. So help us God. It's God and Country Channel in here. Hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe.